Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode here at Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate. And as 2023 comes to a close, we thought we'd take a look at the top 10 guitars by value to go through the sale room this year. Now please do remember that these prices include the fees, so it's the total spent by the buyer uh, to give an accurate representation of values for these specific models. Just before we begin, we'd just like to say a huge thank you to all our viewers on this ever-growing channel. We've been absolutely blown away by the response, and for those of you who are just tuning in today, if you do like the content, please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and hit the bell icon for more. There's lots to look forward to in the future with our weekly consignment updates where you'll get to see all the wonderful things that we've got coming through the sale room that are going under the hammer. And of course, just before each auction, we have our fantastic video demos played by Jack Kendrew and recorded by Simon Whitehead. So please do look out for those. And that bell icon is the key way to be notified when those videos go up. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels at Guitar Auctions for Instagram and forward slash Guitar Auctions for Facebook. Also, take a look at our website, guitarauctions.com, where you can look at previews for the upcoming auctions. And then just before the auction, all the bidding takes place at auctions.gardenholgate.co.uk, where you'll also be able to find information for the other specialist sales that we hold here. So here we are, the top 10 guitars at Gardner Holgate Auction Rooms for 2023. Number 10. In at number 10, selling for £15,800, was a 1969 Gibson L5C Special. This guitar was especially made as a retirement gift for Neil Penner, who was Gibson's top sales representative through the 1940s, 50s and 60s. There was no expense spared with this guitar at all, with triple A grade maple to the back, sides and the neck, including a fine spruce top and an ebony board with some intricate inlay with an extra special inlay to the last fret. Helping this guitar achieve its spectacular price was the fact that this guitar was in fantastic condition, as you'll see from the footage playing over. Number nine. Coming in at number nine, selling for a total of £16,432, was a 1953 Gibson Les Paul Gold Top electric guitar. This was a fantastic price considering this was very much a player's grade example. It had a partially refinished body, it had a repaired neck and other hardware modifications. Although the guitar with its original P90 pickups did sound absolutely fantastic and it had a very, very playable, chunky neck. Hence there was very competitive bidding, taking it to its final price. Coming in at number eight was another fantastic player's grade guitar, a 1956 Gibson Les Paul Custom. This guitar sold for just over £17,000 all into the buyer. Much like the previous gold top, this guitar did have some refinishing, but luckily no breaks, and there were other minor hardware issues. 
This guitar was consigned from a UK deceased estate and went to a London-based collector who particularly liked the fact that it had its original hard-to-find staple pickup. And coming in at number seven was a 1961 Fender Stratocaster selling for just under £18,500. This guitar was completely original aside from the Fiesta Red body refinish and a refinish to the neck. The guitar was an incredible player, again consigned from a deceased estate from someone who was a huge fan of the shadows, hence the desire to own a guitar in the Fiesta Red finish. This guitar was bought by a Wiltshire-based musician of some note who had always desired a pre-CBS Fiesta Red Fender Stratocaster and he couldn't pass up on this opportunity as he couldn't quite warrant spending the money on a completely original example. In at number six is a fairly modern guitar in collectible guitar terms, which was a 1999 Fender Custom Shop Jaguar XK50. This guitar, being a Strat, is not to be confused with the usual Jaguar model, but of course it is a nod to the Jaguar car. A limited run of only 25 of these guitars were made by the Fender Custom Shop to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the XK engine with the majority of the guitars going to the most prestigious Jaguar dealers and only a handful making it out into the public domain. Number five. In at number five, selling for just under £21,500 was the first of our artist-associated guitars. This 1964 Gibson Firebird electric guitar was owned by UK-based musician Terry Clemson. Terry used this guitar throughout his career, backing up artists such as Chuck Berry, Gene Vincent, Bo Diddley, and of course is in his own band, the Downliner Sect, who were signed to Columbia. This guitar was sold with many pictures of Terry playing it, including in its original sunburst finish whilst backing Gene Vincent. Somewhere between then and 1972, the guitar was refinished in black, how it is now presented today. The guitar's most prominent outing was in 1972 at the London Rock and Roll Show at Wembley Stadium. Headliner Chuck Berry had a fault with his much-loved ES guitar and in video footage it can be clearly seen when Terry quickly hands Chuck Berry this Firebird and rescues the day. A still image from the concert shows Chuck Berry holding this guitar in his iconic stance and this image was used on a 2017 Chuck Berry album. The guitar was sold to a collector in Europe and since the auction, the guitar has been seen in famous hands again, featuring one of Lenny Kravitz's latest videos. In at number four, selling for a couple of packets of strings over £24,000, was a 2005 Gibson Custom Les Paul Gold Top electric guitar.
The guitar was ordered in 2005 by Eric Clapton's long-standing guitar tech, Lee Dixon. The guitar was sold of its original order form, which listed the custom specifications such as the slim tapered neck and the single P90 pickup. Number three. In at number three, selling for just under £28,000, was a completely original 1964 Fender Stratocaster finished in Olympic white. An excellent example of a lightly played guitar from the era and was sold on behalf of the original owner. And in at number two, selling for a shade under £31,000, another artist associated guitar. This time a 1975 Gretsch White Falcon electric guitar that was previously owned and played by French rock and roll legend Johnny Halliday. Images from the late 1970s show Johnny playing a White Falcon, which is thought to be this very guitar. To add to the artist's provenance, Johnny Halliday gave this guitar to Rick Parfit of Status Quo in 1981. The guitar was subsequently sold to the seller in 1983 and remained in his collection until this year. With a pre-sale guy price of five to ten thousand pounds, this guitar had one of the most frantic bidding competitions of the year. Number one. And coming in at number one, completely smashing all the other sale prices of the year, and this will come as no surprise to our regular followers, is the Virginia V, a 1958 Gibson Flying V electric guitar in its original case. With a rough pre-sale price guide of 50 to 80 thousand pounds, the guitar ended up selling for just around 82,000, or for those the other side of the pond, roughly $110,000. This ended up being a very respectable price considering its originality issues. The guitar had been refinished at least twice and most severely the neck had been shaved down and reprofiled to be less of that of a standard Fender Stratocaster. The guitar had a few other minor issues but did feature its extremely rare original case. And the guitar was very well documented, including being the double page feature in Tony Bacon's iconic book, The Ultimate Guitar. For further information on this guitar, check out our YouTube feature and also check out the listing on our website. 
We really hope that you've enjoyed following the auctions this year, whether that's watching them live, attending in person, or following us on our YouTube channel. And lastly, thank you for all your support this year. That goes out to our sellers, our buyers, all of our attendees, and those of you who are watching our channel. Please remember to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and hit the bell icon for all future content, and we'll see you in 2024.